there's been some very big uh, rivalries down in Munster um, down through the years, Paddy. But like, I mean, would it be fair to say Limerick and Cork? I'm thinking about mm. if if there wasn't COVID, we'd be doing a live show on uh, you know tonight somewhere, and we'd probably do a bit of nostalgia. It'd probably be scraping it a little bit mm. when it comes to this Cork Limerick rivalry. Is there, do, it seems like there isn't much hatred or kind of history between them, or is that fair? I'd say it's fair enough. Um, they're they're only down the motorway from each other, but. Um, yeah, they're the, or the main road there, but they, there doesn't seem to be too much. All I can remember is a couple, you know, like the rock hitting that shoulder oh, and yeah. over the bar. Like that was that was a big moment. Um, and maybe uh, was it Brian Corker in his first game back? Pint off his knees. I think it was in Limerick. Maybe it wasn't in Limerick, but they're the only things I can really think of. Um, I think when Cork were up, Limerick were a little bit down, and, and vice versa. When Limerick were up during the middle of the nineties. Cork were, were down a little bit as well yeah. between the early 90s the 80s and, and of course when they had 99 2003 2004 so I think that was the thing that we didn't really have that big matchup uh, between the two teams but uh, I think looking forward though these two teams are young this Cork look like they have a serious setup coming for the next few years so it could really ignite over you know the next uh, period of season yeah we need something to kick mm. off in this all Ireland and it could yeah, and it yeah, could yeah. set up this rivalry for the next uh, I don't know how Damien I don't know about this two all Munster all Ireland finals in the last two years like I mean these Munster hurling snobs are, 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 are going through a great uh, time altogether we have to stay very quiet in Leinster yeah well <clears throat> I suppose the truth doesn't lie Colm and uh, Munster Hurling is better at the minute than Leinster Hurling so it is you know like uh, you, you look at Kilkenny to win the Leinster Championship where you know they got it tough enough against Wexford maybe Wexford could have won it at Leach in uh, through the ball over the bar and Conor McDonald uh, you know they, 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 I reckon they would have easily went on and won uh, the Leinster Championship uh, so I do but uh, what you call it no the Munster, Munster Hurling Championship is, is way more interesting is way more enjoyable than the Leinster Championship Go, I went out with the Championship very early this year so they did uh, got beaten by Dublin, which was a huge surprise in particular to me. So I was, but Munster hurling at the moment is way better. And I have to say, uh, and I, I don't care what anyone thinks, uh, I think the Munster hurling teams are better than the Leinster um, teams. You know, uh, Kilkenny got to an All Ireland semi final, apart from playing Wexford, uh, literally, Harley and Mark put on, they won the Leinster final against Dublin uh, easy. So they were the Munster teams are much better. You take their way more competitive, even in the round robin in the back door. So they are so... Um, no, I think the two teams that are in the All-Ireland final deserve to be there. They're there on merit and uh, they've given us the most excitement and the most to talk about. Yeah, no, they definitely have. And I think we need to get used to it with these two teams anyways. Like Paddy says, Cork after playing in four under 20 All-Irelands in a row now and winning the last two, like Jesus. And we know what Limerick um, are like. Kieran Kingston has been given out. Well, no, I wouldn't say given out. He's been making the point that two weeks preparation isn't enough. Mm. I can kind of see where he's coming from. He said, in an ideal world, you might like another week, but not longer. So you no. want the perfect three yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Um, he says, two weeks is probably a little bit short for planning and preparation. Plus, there's a lot associated with a final, whether it's travel arrangements, suits, banquets, sponsors, you know, all those yeah. kind of things. Two weeks, like it, it's, it's, it's grand for players, I suppose, yeah. Paddy. For management, I'm sure it's a nightmare. Well, it is, and it isn't grand for players as well, um, because I suppose we all remember our first All-Ireland and... It's 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 the things outside it that that can distract you. It's Jesus, when are we getting the suits? Even though you know now I look at that suit and sure you know it's in the charity shop. Yeah. But there's you know your parents' tickets. You know how many are we getting? And Jesus, the aunties and the uncles are they going to get one? Where are they going to be sitting? <coughs> the banquet afterwards. Is, who's your mother and father are going to be sitting beside? All this stuff comes in, uh, especially with your first one. And I think that's what Kieran Kingston is alluding to. Right. <coughs> if you're talking about Limerick. They've been there, they've worn the shirt, they've played in two All-Ireland finals now. They know exactly what to, what to expect. And even the match itself, they're just focused on that. Whereas you can't help it. I don't care who you are, you cannot help it. If you're playing your first All-Ireland, thinking about all the things that surround it. And look at that, that's a big challenge, I think, for Kieran Kingston. That's, that's, why, that's why they're there and that's why they've gotten this far. They use their experience. Like you look at The Rock, he was involved in all those great teams. As a youngster, I think he was under 21 in 99 when they won their All-Ireland one that has a player a bit more experienced. So he'll be important to He's talk to He's very, them. very yeah. important in that. Donald O'Grady was manager before. He can advise um, Kieran Kingston on, on the different elements of preparing the team. So 
hugely important to have that experience but yeah I do think it can work has been you know tough to focus the minds uh, going into this week and another another week you would have got all that out of the way including the media night you would have got all that out of the way and a week to go with probably a free run then yeah well I'm like I mean I've got all Ireland final royalty on the show today like I mean you've prepared Paddy for six all Irelands um, Damien you have prepared for four so you were on the panel in 2001, 2005, then t- twice in 2012, and you were 9, 10, 11, twice in 14 and 16 as well. Like, I mean, did it get easier, Damien? <coughs> well, did, did it get easier? Um, I remember just the, the freshest one is the 2012 one that we got to the All-Ireland final, and uh, uh, we should have beaten Kilkenny, just we should have, and uh, it went to a, a draw. And I remember they following the replay, and like I, I've said this before, did it get easier? So, sometimes, you know, players wins matches, but the management decide, uh, the management are there for help, you know, guidance, everything. And a lot of it can come to, you know, uh, the right preparation. And I remember just in 2012, we, we drew the All-Ireland and we, the All-Ireland was in two weeks' time. And we trained way too hard, way, way too hard in that period, especially the week after. I remember we went into a 15-a-side match, like the choose or wins night after match. And like it was hammer and tong stuff. Lads wanted to blow out what they had in their system. Lads wanted to get onto the panel. Lads wanted to get onto the team like this. But yeah, it's it, the preparation where then I have heard stories that Kikini didn't train that week. You know, so I, I, I would agree there that the management play a huge part. But at the end of the day, Colm, when the boys cross the line, you know, the management can only do so much. They can only burn on, burn on souls. But preparation is fierce important. Uh, the 2005 All-Ireland we played Cork. And I remember Cork saying after the match that they could just never see Galway beating them in the All-Ireland final, which was fair enough, but that was a, a very, very, um, I suppose, experienced team at the time. And then in 2001, I was a sub. I was a sub, and I seen grown men terribly upset after losing the All-Ireland to Tipperary. I, did, I was only 19, I was only a child. I was basically uh, an added supporter inside in the dressing room. But uh, preparation going into an All-Ireland final is fierce important. And the biggest word I'd have is that outside of the match is a circus. That, that's the best word I'd call it, is a circus, because... The tickets is a major thing. You know, your, ma- your mother and father are asking you, can you get me extra tickets because your neighbour to help you farming or your, your neighbour and he has to be looked after. He's a, you know, and this is, I know you're laughing, but this is the stuff that goes on. Yeah. Can you get who's called the tickets? Your brother come up and tell you, will you be able to get me an extra ticket for my girlfriend going into the banquet? It's all a circus. At the end of the day, the only thing that's most important is that the player himself and the team get themselves, gets themselves right and gets their preparation as right as possible. And the day, the, an hour after the match, Colm, no matter who you got a ticket for the banquet or who you got it, it's all forgotten about. And you're, you either had a great game or you didn't. So if I had any advice for any of them players, I'd tell them all to allocate a brother. Do you know, if it, even if it's tickets, and tell one of the county board, ring my brother, he'll tell you what tickets we want. I don't want anything to do with it. And, yeah. and you'd laugh. It's, it, it's only a small thing, but it's very, very important. It's for you to try concentrate on the game. But yeah, I think the preparation a week before the All-Ireland final, the management have a huge part today to just basically reassure the players that we're good enough to do this. Yeah, like that's a good point, Damien. You almost want a little mini agent. <laughs> the week come at the tickets, the banquet, I'm sure, is a big one. Yes. Then getting your suits oh. fitted. Then I, I suppose, Paddy, like how, how much of an advantage is having done it before? I suppose ironing out these things and Limerick will have done it. Mm. Only Patrick Horgan and Seamus Harnady will have done it for Cork. And Owen Cadigan was on a mm. football, prepared for a football All Ireland. So, like, I mean, it, that is a big advantage for Limerick, is it? To, to me, it's a huge advantage. The only disadvantage it is for Limerick is no, it sounds stupid, you're playing an All Ireland final, but the. Uh, excitement, the exuberance of playing the All-Ireland after three mightn't be the same as after one or two. You right. know, that, so look, that, that probably would be That can be, be an advantage too. But it can be, it can be an advantage, but it, it's, if Cork, like we went out, I remember, against Kilkenny in 09, and we had kind of gone far enough in 08, but kind of left an All-Ireland semi-final behind as we felt. Um, but we were finally probably ready for Kilkenny that year. We played him twice that, that uh, league and we'd been hurt from the year before. But well, it was our first All-Ireland, but we were lucky. We had Cummins, Lark Corbett and Owen Kelly, like Cork had, playing in 2001 against Damien's Galway. So we at least had that, and we had the experience from the year before. We had a circus in the 2008 All-Ireland semi-final. I remember we were up with the Tip Supporters Club the week before that All-Ireland. I think it was at the Shelburne Races or something like that. Probably trying to drum up support and right. drum up funding. And that, I thought that killed us that time. We were we were the whole day. Do you remember Galway played Kerry the football and it was flooded around Jones's Road? Yeah, yeah. We were up in Dublin that day. The bus was nearly flooded. So this was all. The, so I think we learned the lessons 
and kept it very, very quiet the year after. We stayed overnight in 08, never stayed overnight after that before the match. So it is huge, that, that experience. Um, but I think <coughs> the experienced players, the Hernandez, the Horgans, They'll, they'll have to drum it into their fellow players as well. Now, the other, the other, other very good thing Cork have done, they've played underage All-Ireland finals. I think that's really important as well. And All-Ireland, at the time, whatever age, is is massive in your own head. Yeah. They've lost when they should have won against Tipperary as well, under 21, they would feel. Okay, so they have those, they have that experience, but they're going to have to obviously bring a huge excitement on the day, massive work rate. Like they, They'll have to show an intensity that, you know, we saw it against Kilkenny in parts they're going to have to even go to a higher, maybe two more levels to get one over and to compete with Limerick. Yeah, oh no, I, they definitely will. What, what about the Damien, the, the match day then? Like, I mean, for an All-Ireland, and you played in underage, you know, uh, uh, high-profile games, All-Irelands. What's the diff... What, what, how does the senior one? <coughs> you talked about the circus. There wouldn't be that circus underage. You run out past the Liam McCarthy. You shake the president's hand. Like, I mean, how... Like, what's all that? What's all that? Like, you know the eyes of the whole country are on you. Would that ever cross your mind? Then there's the parade. Like, I mean, uh, is this occasion incredible? Yeah, well, Colin, I'll I, I, I just kind of... I'll, I'll throw it back a, a, a another level, right? Which is a lower level, right? When when we were trying to win our first county title, Portumna, right? Just for example, we went into the pitch in Pierce Stadium, got used to the whole settings. We we done kind of like a trial run, right? Now that's a lower level, right? This is an All Ireland final, and the, the truth of it is that both, I think will I don't think Limerick will do it this year. I reckon Limerick would have done it two or three years ago, where they would basically walk through the whole thing, pretended they were going behind the band. Uh, pretend, go shaking hands, all that. Like I heard a rumor, and Paddy will be able to speak about this. That, uh, for example, you done a trial match a couple of days before an All Ireland final, Paddy, and you had huge uh, noise created with speakers around the whole pitch, so the players would get used to the noise. Like also, Colm, you go and just say some people will use the FINA, right? Just for the training pitch, and it's all grand, and you're doing your warm up, and you're doing your setting, you do have a little bit of a team talking. Or, but the minute you get onto the bus, Colm. That's when the nerves really kick in. And next thing you're going up and you're stuck in traffic and you're looking out and you see lads waving at you and your lads banging the bus and there's <laughs> lads roaring and singing and everything. And next thing you get into the dressing room and next thing you're wondering where you're sitting and next thing you realise that you want to sit in the right corner and next thing your jersey's in the left corner and there's stuff, and you want to sit beside your man beside you because you sat beside him and you scored five points from played three and it's a lucky omen. And this is the sort of crack. But then, Colm, you talk out and you go into the little green room and if people don't realise this in Crow Park, you have a little warm-up room like this, which would be the size of, I suppose, a, a big sitting room or, or a, a big kitchen where you can poke the ball around and there's a net. And people might know that that haven't been around and lads do their warm-up. And, all. and next thing you come in and you get your drinks and you're told you have to drink this and this captain will talk. And next thing you run out onto the pitch. So you just, and across Lee McCartan and the crowd just roars, explodes like this. And next thing, the nerves just start kicking in. And then, as you said, they haven't done this before. Now they're going around the band. Now they're going meeting the president like this. And whether you like it or not, you have to do it. Like this. And you have lads telling you, and next thing, the match kicks in. So this is all sideshow. It's all circus stuff. But it's all important because if you're not mentally ready for this, this could go over your head. And all of a sudden, you're in a bag of nerves or in a bundle of nerves or whatever. But you have to just keep focused. And I've no doubt that both management teams will have spoke about this, but in particular Cork, because it's their first All-Ireland and they have a lot of young lads. And it's an important aspect of the game just to have what we call a run-out. Yeah, you seem like you prepared for it fairly well. We'll just mm. move off this one. But the the thing that might throw off a player is you're out on the field way earlier than you usually yeah, are. Yeah. So it's a long time. Usually you go out, get the warm-up done, and you're, you have a timed that there's no kind of spare time. Whereas I'm sure you have too much bloody spare That's time. It. Well, if you think about it, any trainer you've ever had, it's probably the same routine all year, isn't it? So you're, you're doing your warm-up to this time. Then we go for the toss and then we, we, we set our positions and go. But the biggest match you've ever played in, they're throwing off all your routine. Like, you can't even help it. And yeah. that's what's going to happen. So um, I think the the parade is one thing. You're still moving. You're still you're still kind of going around. You're taking in the atmosphere. I think meeting the president is something where everything just stops. Everything around you. And you're, you're standing up and you have to be... Like, you're a caged animal going to war. But now I have to stand up and be like... Yeah, you know, yeah. Hand out for uh, Mr. Higgins or President Higgins um, or Mary McAleese. And that, that could be a time that the toss just start running into your head and seeping into your head. Like, I can remember standing there waiting to go and a couple of friends in the crowd because they sit right in front of it. 
and a lot of drink on board and they're waving out with you and I couldn't help but look up <laughs> and I did, there was definitely photos of me smiling yeah. looking into the crowd because you know they're having their All-Ireland final weekend whereas I'm trying to play against yeah, Kilkenny yeah. in, in five you're looking time. at the crowd you can't not well, and I'm, I've talked about before I'm not one that's going to look down at my shoes I've just too much it's like ADHD I can't sit still so I'd be looking around the place and I'd see a load of people I'd know and look that's the way I prepared for it and I, I would advise you know to relax if that's your way of relaxing to look around, to take it in, then do that. Don't feel like you just look down to your shoes, freeze, and, and wait for the match to happen. I think you have to really embrace every moment of it. But obviously, when the national anthem kicks in, you're ready to go. Yeah, that's it. That's ready to go. That's game time. To see uh, Corker playing some game with Jerry Mellorick, lads. I was, I was at that game, and uh, Damien, he <coughs> chased away the, ma- the way the man went down. He went down like he'd been shot. The old sniper, the hamstring, uh, tore badly. And, like, I mean, I saw him when he was taken off the field. He was lying in a lot of pain. But Dermot O'Sullivan is trying to paint the picture. He says, Ger trained last week and is responding well to treatment. We really don't uh, want to make a call on him until later of the week. But at the moment, we'd be disappointed if he doesn't play some part on Sunday. Now, this is mind games as far as I'm concerned, Damien. Like, yeah. he had a big role to play on Keane Lynch the last time. There is no way this yeah. man is, is, is fit to play. It's literally an impossibility. And the tr- and the truth of it is, you're you're right, Colin. It's mind games, and you're not you don't want to give away any of your secrets. And you're you're keeping the Limerick camp guessing, and you're the Limerick camp are going through their team and going, who'll mark this lad? And they're doing it like this. You're just keeping it guessing. And uh, the whole the long and short of it is, all Ireland final day, the cork of seventy minutes to try overturn Limerick, and it's not going to be easy. We all know that. You're not going to probably lad that's only halfway. You're fifty no. fifty. My, my personal opinion. Waste of time throwing a lad out that has a dodgy hamstring uh, to go out and do the job. So uh, I, I would agree with you there 100%. Uh, I can't see him uh, playing any part. No, me, me neither. Come here, I want to ask you about this. Um, and I can ask the two of you because Paul Murphy's often mentioned, maybe it's a Kilkenny thing. Mm. Paul Murphy's often talked about the Cork swagger and the cockiness. Mm. And Jackie Terrell's been talking mm. about it this week as well. And I saw it on, on RT. And like this thing, Corkness. Mm. How real is this, Paddy? I think there, there's a there is a bit of truth to it, all right. Even my own experience, I remember, do you remember when, was it Gerald McCarthy that they went on strike in 2009? And it was talked that they were doing a bit of training on their own, this and that. And we came out and we were hopping after 08. We knew we had a team that could challenge for the All-Ireland. Yeah. And we played them in Turles and they damn near turned us over. Like we had it all to do to get over the line that day. And to me, that was the one day. And I had, I remember John Gardner was playing wing back. He was slipping up wing forward like we'd see now, trying to take puck outs. They were just trying every little trick in the book right. to get themselves over the line that day. Yeah, I, I would say it's there. I, and the Kilkenny lads, interesting you say that, they're probably growing up or remembering stories like the 99 team where the, these, you know, how many under 21s had Cork that day and they came out and they bet Kilkenny in the wet. And I'd say they, Kilkenny lads especially, never forget a, a negative story like that or a dour story for them like that. So I think they'll they'll have remembered it. They'll always be reminded by, by, by their old fellas. But definitely Cork, when, when we've played them, and we've let them get running with the ball, let them start hurling it up the field and into their full forward line. It's a nightmare. They're, they're probably the one team that, as a defender, I didn't like playing against. They had hurlers everywhere. And again, if you if they got a supply of ball in there, they were very, very confident and all, had all the skills. So it's certainly there to a degree. And I think this team are waiting to take off. Um, I think they're under savage pressure Sunday. But they certainly looked like at the last day, like they could have folded easy enough the last day. Um, so there is a bit of biting them. Um, but interesting you say Jeremy Miller he's the type of lad that was bringing the bite to the team so I think you know he is a loss and I, I definitely think he's out as well yeah no I, I definitely think so have you any experience of the Cork cockiness or you know no, Cork, I, Corkness I, I, Damien yeah I reckon that's a Cork Limerick a Cork, a Cork um, Kilkenny thing because to be fair I don't think Galway and, and Cork had um, had much uh, much of an analysis but who, who would I be to um Question that the Kilkenny man would say, you know, they, 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 if they say they're cocky, they're cocky. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they are, maybe they are with them. They have the whole 0405 kind of rivalry with them as well. So maybe that is something. But they to... probably didn't, it all probably leads back to, as you said, as a young lad, but I, 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 one thing's for certain, they definitely didn't like the time when Cork won the All Ireland in 1999. And I'd say that's one, if, Co- if you were to analyse and ask Cody which one was the one that really united him the most over losing the All Ireland, I bet you it was the 1999. All Ireland final uh, in the rain. Yeah, uh, he, 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 they didn't like that one. 
There's some similarities with this, with the under 20, under mm. 20 success or under 21 success, two in a row, they have two in a row now, they're coming up as underdogs with a young team. So there's definitely some similarities about it. Kieran Kingston's playing the old school game, uh, Paddy. We're not delusional. We know we're going into this game as total underdogs and they're raging favourites and understandably so. So like, I mean, he's saying that it's the old school game of let's put pressure on them. Like, I mean... The reality is there's usually a bit more pressure on the favourites. Grand, we understand that. Cork haven't won in Ireland in 16 years. Yeah. I know they have a young team, mm. but there's a lot of pressure. Patrick Horgan's nearly gone. You know, I don't mean nearly gone in the bad way. He's hurling brilliantly, but like he's he's on the way like where he might miss out in an All-Ireland. Right, I think yeah. there's huge pressure. Can you say one team's under more pressure than the other just because they're favourites or is pressure equal? Well, externally, you know, us talking about it, media, supporters, there's, there is more pressure on Limerick because they should be winning this match just going on form going previous couple of years where all these players have been involved or most of them inside though I think you're right you know the likes of a uh a Pat Horgan is going to be feeling this one a Hardy who's given as much as Pat Horgan nearly I think to the Cork cause they'll be saying this could be my last chance okay we've great players coming but maybe maybe we're going to stutter for a couple more years like I've said that before this isn't to say Cork are going to be brilliant every year for the next 10 years it might take them a few years to really get rolling so they will feel the pressure I remember we won the county final a couple of years ago I was 34 at the time and I have never in my life felt the pressure that I did that morning before the match. I, I'm not one for going for walks, but I had to go out of the house, clear the head, uh, because I felt like it was going to explode. So there is definitely pressure on players in there who haven't got an All-Ireland medal before. And as I say, we're saying Cork are going to dominate. It just doesn't happen like that. A couple of injuries and a couple of maybe bad managements, whatever can happen, yeah. You and you end up not dominating. And maybe this Limerick team, are seven or eight more years going at it and this might be their one chance to ever get an All-Ireland medal and I suppose that is a huge amount of pressure I think Limerick have the normal amount of pressure they had the 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 final the Munster final this year we talked about it they, they didn't play well in the first half but when they had to bring the intensity Tipperary couldn't match it same with Waterford brought it for 15 minutes I watched it again yesterday brought it for 15 or 16 minutes um, this year in the semi-final but when Limerick upped it tinkered a couple of things but up the intensity then Waterford couldn't lift with it as well so I think Limerick are able to go in and say we know what we can bring to the table and if we do then you know Cork guys could implode on the field Yeah no like I mean th- th- there's no doubt about that Damien what do you think about the pressure thing with the with Limerick like Limerick players all have all Ireland medals too is there more pressure on them because yeah. they're favourites than Cork who have none who haven't won in 16 years and are a huge traditional county and there's huge pressure within the county? Like, I mean, I don't know. Wh- where do you see this whole pressure thing? Yeah, well, I, I think I think Limerick are a little bit more pressure than Cork. I think uh, I, I don't think Cork are going to win the All-Ireland. That, that's just my opinion. I, there'll be many that will disagree with me. I think Limerick are the best team in the country and on merit. Uh, I think they have phenomenal players. I think it's a golden era uh, for Limerick hurling, uh, so I do. Um, regarding the pressure, yeah, they, they're, they'll be under pressure because everyone is talking about them. Everyone is say, saying they're as good as the, for example, the Kilkenny team of years ago and that Golden Era team for Tipperary. So it is. So uh, I, I feel that um, that Limerick will try and uh, impose their game onto them straight away. It's like it's interesting, Colin. When you be listening to analysis and listening to stuff, some some things will say that you know when you're coaching or, or training or interested in hurling, the, the stuff you pick up and and like I've often listened to Tomas O'Shea and the football, right? And he often uses the word they never laid a glove on them, you know. And this is what the Limerick boys are going to be saying to the to the to the players is that get stuck into them. Don't let Cork get the running game on you. Let their energy get hit them with the body. Get your arms in. Get your tackling count up. The middle eight is going to be vitally important. So it is. But yeah, I think Limerick are under a little bit more pressure than Cork. I don't think Cork will win the All-Ireland this year, but they're coming big time. I, I think that they have a lovely team coming, but as Paddy said there, you have to make the most of it. Just because they have a lovely team coming doesn't mean that they'll be back there next year. And I'll give you the example of us in 2012. We had a lovely young team in 2012, uh, Galway. Should have won the All-Ireland, right? And 2013, we were a joke shop. You know, it, it doesn't work that day. It work that way. They have 70 minutes to try winning All Ireland, and if they can do it, brilliant. But I do think Limerick will be under a little bit more pressure um, 
than uh, Cork for this All Ireland, but Cork are coming big time. We we mentioned Patrick Horgan um, there, and he might be under a bit of pressure, seeing that he's going towards the end. But his numbers are off the charts here, Paddy. So he's thirty three. He's in his fourteenth season. He says at the moment he says he's enjoying his hurling more than he ever did. Mm. I'm surprised. I was a little bit surprised that he's not getting as much ball as he used to. But like he's making the most out of it. Um, he needs nine more points in the final to beat Tony Kelly to be top scorer mm. this is at 33 in your 14 season still on the go still scoring heavily he's Cork's all time record scorer he's 31 points off Joe Canning as the leading all time championship he's the most points from play ever and mm. he'll catch Canning because he'll play next year so yeah, he's yeah. going to be the all time he's four all stars he's captain of the team Joe Canning got his kind of rewards yeah. in when 18, 18 surely yeah. hard, like I don't know because sometimes things can be just written in the stars for a man no? Yeah no, to be honest he's one man I've marked a, a good few times now and had the pleasure to mark him um, and what a player absolutely unbelievable um, and I think he's one player that you could look back through the years and say he was always a good player but the older he got the better he got um, but his his hands are, are on another level you know I suppose you, you talk about TJ Reid Canning Cal- Callan and himself all kind of around the one mix of generation and player um, and they all had that that those hands wrists strong wrists and I, I'd i love to see him win an All-Ireland absolutely love to see him win one um, he was he was you know obviously much very much a ball player but he was able to you know he was able to tough it out as well I think he's lasted so long though because he plays in the full forward line in a way he's it's, it's, he doesn't get involved too much in the you know in the physical stuff it's ball out in front um, and he'll come out and every time you know 9 times out of 10 or 99 out of 100 he'll touch that ball yeah. he'll spin you and he'll pop it over the bar so he's he's vitally <clears throat> important for him I was a little bit worried the last day against Limerick actually or sorry the last day in the semi-final against Kilkenny that was turned into the Pat Horgan show again do you know the way we often see Cork playing well the ball into Horgan he scores but when that dries up the game disappears from so at halftime I was actually quite worried from that that's what it turned into until Alan Cadigan came in and then near the end I thought he took a floating shot that was real you know if you're talking about Horgan over the last few years he was taking on those shots whereas this year Cork are talking about being more of a team more of a team yeah. and putting it to the right person in the right place so I hope he brings that on Sunday I hope he, he just does the right thing every time he gets on the ball, whether it's take a score off his left or his right or set up his players because they can't waste, they can't think about their own legacy, they can't think about how they're playing. If they do that at any stage, they'll be beaten. And He deserves an All-Ireland medal for what he's done, but unfortunately, you know, we just don't see that happen. We have a great forward on, on our screens there who was unfortunate not to win an All-Ireland, and he'll tell you firsthand, you know, it doesn't matter how well you play or how much you give to a cause, you don't have any divine right to have a medal. No, sport can be cruel. So, Patrick Horgan has four All-Stars. He's the, mo- he's the second most All-Stars of a player who never won an All-Ireland. Who has the most? Finish on a little Milan. quiz here. John Milan, well done. Yeah, yeah you're very I, I, I give him enough of him all <laughs> All right, we'll come back and talk about the match. I know the two of you are dying to. So we're going to start off the analysis, lads, by talking about the Cork half forward line and the Limerick half back line. Because mm. very interesting stuff. Usually we were obsessed with the Limerick half forward line. Now I've become a, I'm becoming a little bit obsessed with Limerick half back line. But first we have to establish what the Cork half forward line is going to be. And the big talking point here is, is, mm. is Shane Kingston, is he starting or is he coming on as a sub? I know people think I'm probably an awful clown. I personally wouldn't start him again. Um, I just think, as Damien said, Limerick are going to come out to absolutely pummel the Cork lads. Any time they get a hand on the ball, like that midfield area uh, with Fitzgibbon and Luke Mead, like if I was Limerick, I'd be targeting them because that's their runners. But they're not the strongest of players. Like Luke Mead isn't strongest, but I thought he was really efficient the last day. He kept their game plan going and moving the ball along. So right, roundabout way, they're going to target hard around the middle. And I have ta- spoken here before, before the semi-final, that's why I said Kingston, I don't think, is a great ball winner or read the play to come onto it and then make the right decision when he's on the ball if it's too tight. Uh, I think people will say, Jez, I was proven wrong the last day. I wouldn't say that. I think he came on when he was open. He was getting the ball and he had space to run into. How many times was he actually met by two or three people the last day when he came on? And as as well as that, if they're going to win this match, they're going to need some injection in the second half. Like, they're not going to just win it off a good first 15, 20 minutes. They're going to need something coming. And I think that if he did it in the first match, 
Is it going to be in his head when he comes in? I can go on and make some difference here. Is it going to be in the crowd's head when he comes on that they're going to get electrified again? Um, and I just think that try to work that again. I know lightning doesn't strike twice, but if he mm. came on and scored two or three pints, or if he came on and set a goal up and a couple of pints, then that would be massive in the last 20, 25 minutes. And personally, I think if it was me making a change to that team, I'd start Alan Cadigan. He'd be my man I'd be putting in there. I thought he was awesome the last day and taking belts and taking everything that the, the, the tip or the Kilkenny lads could give him in the full back line. But I would leave Kingston on the bench and hope that he makes a similar uh, contribution. Right, OK. Because I was thinking almost the other way in that, um, you know, substitutes <coughs> making that impact is almost impossible. Again, we saw Richie Hogan doing it against Galway. He mm-hmm. couldn't repeat it. Walter Walsh against Wexford. He never repeated mm-hmm. it. And there's a good chance, uh, Damien, that Shane Kingston will be coming on the field with Cork behind. And we know how hard that is for subs. I, don't, I, I would disagree with Paddy in that I would be more in line for starting him. What's it, what, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I would be the same. I, I, I would like to see Kingston start inside you because, number one, he deserves to start. And number two, there wouldn't be any All-Ireland only for him. So uh, my, my whole opinion is, but he won't start. I'm fully convinced he won't start. I, I don't think they'll, uh, they'll, they'll, t- they'll see him as a better impact. They'll see the, the management team themselves, they'll say it worked, uh, him coming off. They'll, say, they'll be saying to themselves, when we need a burst of energy and from the a roar from the crowd, when they bring Kingston in to give the lads a lift, this will be the whole thing. So uh, I think Paddy could be right there that they'll put Cadigan in the corner, which might release Jack O'Connor out in the wing like this and uh, try maybe expose uh, the likes of the, the Limerick half back line like Tip did in the Munster final. This, these are only things that... But my own opinion is both setups are going to have their own game plan, but I reckon that Limerick are going to have a game plan that's going to be broken into four segments. So there's, And Limerick are going to have a game plan broken into the first 17 and a half minutes up to water break. And it's basically middle eight, absolutely win all the breaking balls like this. And I always remember as well years ago, um, the first time I ever heard of the word middle eight was from Declan O'Sullivan, a Kerry footballer. Uh, so I did, right? And he was on about the middle eight, right? And it was as simple as this Limerick have gone into the middle eight. They have the best middle eight in the country. If, Limerick, if Cork are going to try to win this game, they have to basically put their middle eight on the back foot. But I think um, Kingston, I, I, I feel sorry for him because he played so well coming out of the sub and I think that's what's going against him but I, I, I can see him being a sub again the next day the, the, what you call, see I was thinking the Cadigan could give them mm. that spark off the bench which he did the last time because he was in hitting that shots and he I thought he ignited it when he came on more than Kingston mm. funnily enough even though Kingston in a different got way, a, in like, a different way. Yes, it was almost yeah, like this yeah. is what you want but like I mean are we all agreed that Jack O'Connor has to be wing forward because like I mean let's talk about it here because Tony Kelly um, was ta- he's only saying what most of us have been saying anyways is that Limerick defence go- half back line goes zonal so D- Tony Kelly was talking at his player of the month award he says it'll be interesting to see how they, how they get on because usually with Limerick they don't follow you it's incredible isn't mm. it he says invariably they're never chasing after a lad it's hard thing to draw them out especially their half back line they tend to mind their own patch numbers 5, 6 and 7 right mm. we're all agreeing with this this yeah. is what they do 100%. so are Cork going to be stupid enough to put it into their full forward line knowing that they've no half forward line up in support and knowing the half the half back line are dropping off to help their help their full back line? Is the smart thing to do for Cork to say, right, we know these three fellas are not going to be followed. We know we're very fast. Mm-hmm. We know we're good at the short game. We know that they'll get a run in the half back line to take them on. Now, I accept the point that the Limerick half forward line will be dropping back to help out, but they won't get that back there as fast as a feckin' mm. slitter is going to la- <laughs> Excuse my language, I'm getting over hyped up. Surely Cork's entire game plan is going to be based around Jack O'Connor, I'm putting Shane Kingston and Robbie O'Flynn doing some damage running at that half back line. Yeah, that, that's absolutely lovely as we talk about it here <laughs> <You know? laughs> that, that, that is the, but look that is the way if you could get a perfect game if they had a perfect storm uh, on Sunday they get every ball they break a tackle or half break a tackle and they pop it onto the Luke Mead who's going to pop it on again and look they'll have to do that a lot like that if they're to have a chance in this game they have to be able to get running and people say run at their defence run at their defence the running at the defence will not happen unless they can break a tackle out of their back line Coleman sits back very very deep and pops balls out like they're going to have to be launching straight out of there um, like I think Jeremy Millerick that's why he 
is a bit of a loss. Like he's able to bust through. He's only one direction. That's forward. Owen Cadigan is more of a marker. I assume he'll come in wing back, which I think is a good thing. He's he's a good marker, but probably not. His no. hurling days are behind him in terms did, of yeah. You know, he did well on Morrissey though. In the he did well on Morrissey. Well, that's what I mean. I think you need to mark him like they're like you're a cornerback. Yeah. Full, but that's why I don't mind him playing there. Um, and I think he will do that but they need to push up hard and, and break through the tackles and give it to Fitzgibbon um, and, uh, around the middle of the field but that's easier to, I think Limerick will push up on them from their midfield I don't think Limerick are going to sit their half back line will sit that's fine but their midfield I think are going to be all over Corks because I think Corks full back line and half back line while they're grand hurlers some are good markers some are good hurlers I don't think they have the combination of both where Coleman I don't think is going to drive out through tackles whereas Cadigan doesn't have as much hurling so I think they're going to say right let's see if he can get out through us and I think that could be where they become unstuck but I hope I hope they're not that easily unstuck you know? Yeah well like I mean Damien you've often said like the frustration of you when you'd be in the half hurling and you go short for a ball and it'll come in over your head and now you're kind of being you know you're neither here nor there Whereas Cork simply have to work through their half forward line, right? They just have to. These lads are going are not going to be marked yep. for a lot of the game. Cork have <coughs> to go through their half forward line because the problem with Cork, a lot of the good play against uh, Kilkenny in the second half was going in towards uh, Cadigan and these lads. That ball into the full forward line surely won't be on if that Limerick half back line won't follow their men. They have to do it some other way. Yeah, my my own opinion is, Colin. I don't think Cork are going to pay, change their game plan an awful amount just because they're in the All-Ireland final against Limerick. I think they're going to play through the lines. That, that's why, So they're going to get the ball, they're going to try to do all their little, their two or three extra passes they all do. And then I reckon when they get the ball to the half forward line, they're going to be on to these Jack O'Connors and these boys like this to take them on. Take them on and run them. And hope then that like the Patrick Horgan might get onto a ball and flick the ball over the bar uh, and that type of stuff. But I, I don't think they're going to change it an awful amount just because they're playing Limerick. But Limerick will try and impose their game of complete and utter work rate and getting in challenges and getting in tackles. That's what they will do like this. And like William O'Donoghue and Darrow, um, William O'Donoghue and Darrow Donovan, they're their two main players for the half-back line. I, I personally think that's why the half-back line can sit back so much of time because them boys are just working unbelievably hard. But the car, the car boys are just going to play through the lines and try try... Well, as I say, get into the half forward and maybe take them on and then try win a couple of frees and also Patrick Horgan get onto a couple of scores. That that that's my opinion is going to be their game plan. They're not going to change it up because they're in the All Ireland final. Yeah, no, they probably won't. Like I mean, it's interesting to see what the, what they can do here, really. Like I mean, I suppose if they do get the, the ball in space, their strength is running at them and Limerick have commented on the core pace mm. you know but long, ball into the full forward line isn't really going to use that the ball the, the ball to use that I accept the the idea like I mean if they're going long with their puck outs they're not really going to their half forward no. line so much because they won't win that high ball like going short with the puck outs is dangerous well, they've done it if you look at the the league match because we talked about it before and then they played in the I think it was the Munster semi-final I watched a, a lot of that yesterday again uh, they did a lot right especially in the first half when it was a game they got two soccer punches for goals and I think inexperience and that and switching off was a big issue but if you looked at the match itself I thought they did a lot right they they kept it very much uh, mixed up, a mixed bag in terms of yeah. their own puck outs they weren't trying to really even hit a man uh, who was standing it was always hitting it into a space and hopefully maybe a Harnady would be coming onto it or break it down in some way and it did stop the Limerick backs uh, being totally comfortable and they weren't totally comfortable in 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 that first half um then when that was when that was being put on they'd also pop a few sharp but we saw in the league encounter I don't know do you remember this that they went short a lot in that league game and Limerick were like animals and savages yeah. because they were after playing a few bad league games Limerick so the backs were against the wall I'd say they were well motivated and they were out like animals so I would be you know I would be very nervous for Cork if they went predominantly kind of short and tried to keep hold of the ball I think again they have to hit around ball into space in midfield ball into space in the half hour line and make sure that they have a cluster of people getting after that ball and I think if they do if they can break some way even around there you know they have a chance to break the ball through to Horgan break it through to Cadigan but if, if, they, if they do go short to their corner back which Limerick allow them to because mm. they'll stand off them yeah. and they let it go to them and then they'll all close down a little bit but if they were to go to the half the corner back so instead of running out and trying to break mm. through your man and break through, why would the cornerback not just take one or two steps and look for one of the three half hours who are not going, if they drop some bit, they won't be 
followed it. You know, there well, has to be a ball there towards the half forward line. I think the half forward line is is a bit of an issue because everybody shifts over. Just say it goes out to the left corner back area for Cork. Um, the other side of the field, the Limerick guys will actually push across. And what I saw what they did last day, which I, I admired what they did, is they would look out the field, take a step out. There's a lot of small windows out there, as I said, Player, the Limerick players are coming over cutting the space for that ball but what they do is they transfer it across to the other cornerback or back to pa Collins who transfers it to the other cornerback all of a sudden that cornerback has a lot more space than the first initial puck out and he gets to go forward so I saw them do that a lot uh, in that first game and I think they'll have to lean on that a good bit and get the Limerick guys shifting over and back because Kilkenny used to do it a lot when, when we played is that if you go short they'll, they'll bring guys from that other side of the field and they'll squash you it's not really about coming to you it's coming across the yeah, field yeah. and so you feel like you're playing in this tiny half a pitch down the field but you have to get out of your head, forget about the crowd, turn around maybe, give it back to Collins who transfers it across or hit it across yourself. And I think if they do that, then they will kind of unsettle Limerick slightly on their puck out. Yeah, no, that may, that definitely makes sense. How do you see the, the puck outs going, Damien? They did vary it. We all remember that game in the in the Gaelic grounds where Cork were just taken apart. And it, like one team which, which Cork do like to maybe go short and maybe go out past the lads, you can't do that against Limerick. They're too big and strong. And the minute one lad holds you up, another lad will be in on you. So I suppose it's when Cork goes short. As you said, they're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to mix it up, Colin. They're going to go short and they're going to go long and they're going to try to find lads. Like Coleman at centre back could pick up a few balls like this, right? But the, I, I, just going back to what you're saying there about the, the middle eight and getting the ball into the half back line. Like the, the long and short it is, lads, if Cork, and this might sound very simple, if Cork want to win this game, they have to keep the ball in the Limerick backs for as long as possible and not let the ball get up the field because I think that Limerick have extremely good forwards and they have a huge work rate. And you're saying there, Con, why don't the why don't the cornerbacks get the ball? Instead of breaking the tackle, he's down the line to maybe a loose wing forward. He's, he's actually not loose. And if you watch the match the next day, Limerick basically will have five across the half back line. They will actually physically have five and their and their half forwards drop down. They'll have physically have five. Which as I said, I, I think myself that they're they're gonna to have to play a bit of mix and match. Uh with the first 17 and a half minutes, I think is going to be like a tone setter for both teams. And Cork have to try stay in the game. And and then they have to play to their advantages. They're going to look at two games. So they are. They're going to look at the way they played against them in this year's championship, and they're going to look at the way uh, Limerick beat Water. And don't forget Water got a little bit of uh uh, got a lot of um, positives of hitting the ball direct into the full forward line to Jamie Barron and to uh, Ozzy. So when you know when they hit the ball in direct, you know, so they, they could go a bit of that as well. But um, they, they, uh, Limerick, they, just Limerick are a very good team at the moment. It's as simple as that. And Cork, Cork going to have to do an awful lot right. But the first first water break up to the, as I call it the first the first uh, quarter is very very important. One one thing Cork did learn and think in the second half against Kilkenny, Paddy, I thought was playing their forwards into forwards because mm. like there's too much of a copycat stuff going on copying Limerick Limerick's Lim, Limerick's game plan should be unique to Limerick and Cork's game plan should be unique to Cork and Limerick should have to worry about Cork's just the same as don't do a cheaper version of Limerick's because that's not your game that'll only allow Limerick's half back line to stand to dominate. and dominate and you'll have no ball full forward line if their half forward line can be as dangerous now Tony, like Tony Kelly says you might draw them out too far but if you come short for a ball it doesn't go to you and then you're turning around and helping out the full forward line they have to turn around and see where you are so they can't double up the same as they would like you know like I think against Limerick your half forward line has to cause problems or else Limerick will just go I'll leave him off well definitely what, 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 how is a worker it's, it's, dangerous see, to me that's the thing it's, it's how it works and you do you but want. Jack O'Connor Shane Kingston and Robbie O'Flynn only as an example they have to watch them surely like I mean they're, they're three very dangerous forwards well yeah and they will watch them if we're talking about a dead ball situation or Cork pick it up in their full back line coming out of the fence so that happens you know if they win a ball back there they will be watching them but the problem is um, when it's in full flight this match yeah, like if we looked at the All-Ireland last year Watford against Limerick it took more Watford lads to stop a Willow Dunahoo to stop um, Garrod Hegarty Tom Morrissey than it would take a Limerick guy to stop the Watford lad and it's the same with Cork it might only take one, maybe two, uh, Limerick guys to dispossess one of the Cork guys. Where you know, I think a Limerick lad draws in two or three fellas, and their, their hands are ridiculous. I watched it last day. Sometimes I don't think it's stated enough. 
they're little I know they're kind of trolls sometimes but they pop it off and they catch it and they flick it over another lad's head and they're absolutely brilliant in close contact so even if you do try and get in three or four of them they have this knack of flicking it away so that's where it comes into and that's that's why I'm talking about that is that's why you might see a Robbie O'Flynn back the field because they have to chase so hard to stop this machine like you know Limerick are kind of like a machine at the minute and of course when you drag back the field um, and you're tackling and that's two or half forwards gone back if you win it back if you do manage to win it back then you've it's nothing up there you See, are you there. robbing Peter to pay Paul there should Cork be saying I don't want you coming back like, let's do something completely different I don't want you coming back unless you're chasing Kyle Hayes or else mm. you're chasing Darren Burrs or else we, we need a presence up there and we have to trust Cadigan to s- stick it into Morrissey we have to trust Tim O'Matney to stick it into Grode Hegarty mm. and our little Luke Mead will drop back on Keith Lynch and Mark Coleman will sweep so you've won sweeper is that not enough? Yeah like, but you I often say this in the, the fo- game I often say this in the football show you'd swear games 10 years ago were like 550 to mm. to 625 they weren't mm. there was low scoring games back when teams didn't drop their half back line or half forward line back I agree but jeez if, if, if Limerick get going and just say the, whoever's in the half hour line Kingston whoever and they're chasing a bit and then they say oh, well I'll let him off to the backs now because I need to stay up here I think Limerick will just run through you then if that's the case and I think you could probably see three or four goals go in I think they're just going to score score yeah, score that's the danger so you do have to turn them over but I take your point to a certain extent if you're not involved in the play you need to be back up here if you think right we're going to be able to turn them over here I need to get my ass back up the field like that is important to be an option and it's just transition like if Cork if Cork managed to bring that intensity that they can turn Limerick over and but they're going to use so much energy doing it but when they transition I mean turn that ball over and they they have possession now on their half back line if they turn them over and lob it down the field that's where they're in serious trouble they have to take the numbers that it took to overturn Limerick and run it back up the field together like they're in some sort of flying V yeah. you know, and that is really important and then you can turn them and you can bring the likes of a Declan Hannon into trouble who look we do we do say if he's isolated like he did was in the Munster final he'll be under a little bit of pressure but it's to get I suppose it's to get that 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 uh, balancing act right like if they commit everyone back I think it's like you know you're, you're going to slow death but if they don't, if they don't commit enough people to break them down, they're going to get hit with sucker punches. So look, they they have to they have to win the battle around the middle of the field, or at, to some extent, they have to get one over on Limerick. But that's that's the real issue is trying to get one over on Limerick. And if you, as Damien said, their middle eight are stronger physically than everyone else's middle eight, and that that's where your real issue comes. But the Declan Hannan one's interesting, Damien, in that we've seen him being taken for a lot of points. But if Declan Hannan wanted to mark these lads, he would mark these lads. He's been told not to mark yeah. these lads. He's been told to hold the yeah. centre back position, and he's always able to double up. And they always get an extra defender. They're impossible, not impossible, but they're very hard to score goals against. Like so, you know, Limerick are pretty happy just letting off that yeah, centre so centre forward. Yeah. He, Limerick are happy enough letting their fee, let points be scored out the field. So, as you said, Hannon sits in this number six pocket. You'll always hear lads saying, you know, don't, don't let your number six be shifted out of position because then you'll open up the whole middle. Right? So, Hannon is happy there, right? And then, as I said to you, you have O'Donoghue and O'Donovan that help him out like this. And then Hannon is, is, or what, is able to go back and help Morrissey out and full back and get the break. So, like, he, he's happy enough with it. Like, Jason Ford is an obvious example of this. Like Jason Ford was going out around the middle of the field and getting short pass and he was throwing over the barn. Lim- I think Lim- myself that Limerick, once they feel they don't concede goals, that they're happy enough just letting points be scored like this because they're, they, their middle eight wins the battle. Their full back line stops them from scoring opposition to scoring goals. And then they have an inside forward line, as we know, that are there. They call they consider them finishers. So they are. So yeah, H- Hannon, is, Hannon is happy enough with his man. Even if he scores three, four, five points, He's happy and, and he just orchestrated everything. Like, I don't know, when the last time I actually seen him getting the ball in the half back and driving it physically into the full forward line, he gets it, he's thrown out the hand passes, left yeah. to right or out in front of him, or little stick passes. So he, he has a job. He keeps the, all the backs in place. He keeps them tuned. He's communicating and he's a role to do there at centre back. And he's their leader and he's their captain. And that's, that's all coming, as you said, uh, from the management. He sits back, stays in the pocket, and he orchestrates everything. Yeah, and a couple of points on that. One, the last time they lost <clears throat> a championship match, I think he went off after 20 minutes against Kilkenny in 2019. Yeah. So he went off that day. And We're nearly being disrespectful to him talking about how he's there for the taking without actually stopping to think. That's, he's not getting cleaned. He's no. not actually even trying. He's playing his role. Yeah, he's now, playing his role. I would argue if he was a wing-back 
playing on a fast wing forward, he would be in a bit of trouble. Like because he he was never the fastest forward or back, and that's not his game, and that's fair enough. But I don't think they'd care if there was ten points scored off him. To be honest, what they would care if you looked at the Munster final, were they okay? They were pissed off because Ford was getting on the ball, but that was a general team work rate issue. Yeah, and being dominated physically. What they wouldn't have liked that day is the fact that two high balls went down, they dropped, and two Tipperary lads walked scot free through their full back line. And they would have said, Declan, on your watch, that doesn't happen. If another team gets a goal, it's a good goal. They've ran through his hair, they've broke a tackle, or the ball has come in and somebody unbelievable has caught it inside and scored it on Dan Morrissey. We'll get over that. But the ball doesn't drop in our 21 with two lads running through it and a goal. And I'd say they would be, I would say he'd nearly be the one taking responsibility for that on that day. And that's where they'd say, no, we draw the line at that. Yeah. And Dan Morrissey obviously come in since then to kind of fix that problem. Like, I mean, so, like, I can see at the weekend <coughs> if Robbie O'Flynn and Jackie O'Connor, the two wing forwards, the odd time they will get that short ball, they will go with Burns or Kyle Hayes and Declan Hannan just comes across and now he's there so like I mean unless your centre forward is actually beside Hannan he's always the plus one Damien and you'll never get the goals that you want this is the point I keep making that the well, ha- half forward line dropping back for the likes of Cork I think is a waste of time Oh well if, the, if that happens Colm we might as well say it's round and the Limerick half back line sit back like this they're not going to win the game I, I don't care they have to be in the four line positions like this, and like I've played with Galway teams, and we've played an awful lot of games with four forwards, and like we didn't win games. If you're two half forwards, I, I see the point. Their two half forwards are coming back, so they are to do a role for the team. But when the ball goes up, you have to be able to push up again, and you have to have unbelievable fitness levels. Fair enough, but they have to be. They're, they're attacking players, and they have to be there to do attacking. And, and what can happen is you you're seen as your two wing forwards. This whole thing is if it's only last fifty minutes. They've done a job for the team and we let in two other lads because they're meant to be the two hardest working players going. But at the end of the day, I think Cork bet Kilkenny the last day because their wing forwards were in their wing forward positions and yeah. they were able to go at Kilkenny. And that's my own opinion. And as I said, that's why it keeps going on, harping on about this uh, mid-late. And like Hagerty and Morrissey are two prime examples of this. Like they come back and help Limerick out, but they also move up the field and get on the scoreboard. So they have to be conscious of both both roles. But I, I agree, Colm. Like, you know, I, I just hope that the, the Cork boys don't, I suppose, change their game plan too much from the last day that got them into an all Ireland final. I, I'd love to see them in the half forward and, and take them on 50-50, go dog v dog, and let's see who win the battle and, and, and go for it. But um, no, if, if they're not going to be there, they're not going to score. That's the and thing. if they don't score enough, they're not going to win all Ireland. Yeah, it's as basic as that. And the thing I always find, without labouring this point, is the half forwards, the working ones, whatever, they'll come back, they'll work hard. You might get the turnover. But there's a whole load of bodies around there. What happens when you get the turnover? The long ball isn't on no. because there's two extra backs up there. So now you have to work it through the hands through a crowd of a crowded area, and it like was that turnover? Did that turnover benefit you? You know, or I I don't know. You'd be sometimes saying like you know, if you step back in your position, would you end up getting more ball as an attacker anyway? Or if you put a wing, an actual wing forward there, would you get more? Yeah, and it, again, I I just think it is a balancing act. But I think a great point by Damien when when they started playing really well against Kilkenny, they were all out attack. And yeah, they were coming on to breaks like Jack O'Connor. He's a forward. His goal came from a break off the full forward line. And he was coming through like a train, and they will need they they do need that, and I do think they need probably minimum of two goals. Um, so that means they're going to have to break through that defense a couple of times, or Pat Horgan's going to have to have some bit of skill. And uh, Pat Horgan, if he gets a good ball in, is more noted as a, a point taker. Yeah, he, he can finish no problem. So they're going to have to have some way that they bust through, and that's why I think Kingston coming on is you know everyone gets tired in these matches the pressure leading into the match the crowd the exhaustion uh, of getting around the field so I just think they need some sort of serious boost when they come in and he's a goal getter he got a goal in every championship game up until he got the seven points uh, so they need something special and they definitely to me they definitely need at least two if not three goals to win it yeah no they definitely do what, what way do you see that uh, Mellerick role Luke Mead will probably play that Damien will he he'll pick up Keane Lynch whenever he drops and Coleman will be trying yeah. to get free every time so now Coleman has shown himself like he dropped Walter Walsh like I know mm. Walter Walsh yeah, is of yeah. a similar size to a lot of these Limerick lads he's the plus one this is the point I keep making he's the plus one is a plus one not enough without a plus feckin' four or five? Like, give me a break. Leave the uh, forwards yeah. up there and yeah. let Coleman find them I, when he gets the, wins the ball. Yeah, yeah. You'd swear, you'd swear the two of us had a chat beforehand, uh, uh, Colm. I, I agree. I, I think 
and, and Limerick, Limerick do it brilliantly, right? And we've spoken about this with Wexford and Wexford bringing lads back to field. Limerick, they, they will have men back, right? But they'll always keep two inside in the full four line. Flanagan, uh, Flanagan will be in there and... Um, Galan. Uh, and was it? Galan, yeah. yeah. Galan, yeah. Flanagan and Galan will always be in the full four line, right? So, yeah, Coleman plays in the halfback line. And to be fair, I think he's, he's the ultimate sweeper. I think he's, he, he's, he's able to run. He's able to pinpoint the pass. He's fierce athletic, and as you're after proving there, he's tough enough to put in challenges and help out his team like this. But yeah, I, I just hope that they don't have two or three lads back uh, like this. Coleman's enough. That's their seventh back. That's their sweeper. Like Luke Meadle dropped back on Keen Lynch with a handful. He has to keep an eye on him, whatever. But Coleman will have to keep an eye on him as well. But I, I just hope they don't do two or three back sweeping. Because if they do, as I'm after seeing, Colin, they won't have enough of forwards up the field to score. Yeah. And, and if that happens, they can't win the All Ireland final. Uh, like that, so I just hope that they go with the second half performance that they did against uh, Kilkenny in particular, that uh, got them back into the game and uh, won the match basically uh, for them. But yeah, Coleman's a brilliant sweeper, and I don't think they need uh, too many more. They'll play it through the lines and all that, but uh, they, they have to have forwards up there to punish Limerick. How come it works so well for Limerick then, Paddy? Because obviously their half forward line are huge physical mm. men. They drop back. They work hard. Mm-hmm. But when they win the ball over, you know, they'll, they'll work one or two quick hand passes and it's a long diagonal ball. And they have two monstrous men inside that can score. Well, so it kind of works, you know, it works, it like, it, that works for them. Do you know the point I'm making is other teams big, trying to copy what they're, they're big trying enough to turn you over and they're disciplined enough not to just want the crowd reaction of a clearance afterwards. Yeah. Like you rarely see, even if it's a long ball, it's more a long pass. So they have it, but over the last few years, they have it perfected. They're brilliant at off-the-shoulder runs too. Like I mean, they might just give a standing hand pass to someone bombing past. Now he's out. Mm. Now the diagonal ball goes. But not at, at, not at one stage are they taking that first ball and turning and saying, I'm going to run out. They're getting that first ball automatically turning, waiting for the next man. And it's when that next runner, be it a Kyle Hayes or Hannon or whoever, when he comes off the shoulder and he's running straight, that's when they think about maybe a stick pass short, maybe a stick pass long. And what I really love about it is they can trust each other. So we see Garod Hegarty, Lynch and, and Morrissey and they can pop up in any of those three positions, even up into the full forward line. And they're saying, my God, he got a ball. He got the ball. Yeah. They can trust the system. And it is a system. No point in saying it's not. They trust, even when those three passes are being met out there, they know they're going to be making those passes so they can afford to run. And by the time that ball gets to the striker, they're in a different position and your wing back and centre back are so not accustomed to going uh, to those places on the field so how many times do we see him on their own striking for points yeah. so that's why I feel you have to be like a, a backs mentality marking that half forward line like a full back lines mentality of get tight be ready to go with him and we say we have Coleman as our spare man so if it is a particularly good ball into the full uh, full back line at least he's there to cover off and it's a trust it's it's skill it's serious skill um, and it is discipline and, and size as well so they have it all to minute you know and when they do give that and, uh, co- and Colm go on Damien Colm can I just say something on the two wing forwards for Limerick and just watch this because I personally won't be at the All-Ireland you, you might be up there in the press box right when the ball has been poked out by, by Cork right if the ball goes down the left-hand side of the field, right, then Hagerty goes back the field to help out his defence. Morrissey then pushes up the field into a forward line unit. Morrissey's not needed over the far side of the field back in his half-back line. And then it's the opposite side. If the ball is put out the other side of the field, if Morrissey has to go back into the half-back line to help out his team because that's his role, Hagerty pushes back up into his wing-forward role. So at all times, if you watch it, now Keane Lynch kind of comes at a triangle, we call it, He's at 11, he's almost out in midfield, right? But j- just watch the all Ireland next day. I will guarantee you Limerick at all times have four forwards playing in the forward line unit, if not five, like this. Just just keep an eye on their pick outs. So if the ball's poked out on the right-hand side, Hagerty might go back and help out his team. But you see Morrissey pushing back up into the forward line unit. Like, there's no point Morrissey being playing in the half-back line the ball's over the far side of the field. Just, just, just something to observe. Like, you know, everyone thinks that Limerick have have all these players coming back to field, but they only have lads coming back to field when the ball is there, but when the ball isn't there, because the, the proof's in the pudding, Marcy 
for example, scored five points and played last day. He didn't score them from the half back line. Yeah, no, no. Like I mean, to do it. Well, and and another person to have obviously have is Peter Casey, who yeah. bridges that gap. So if it doesn't go long diagonal to the two boys, it can go short to him. Mm. And like often when you see the two boys getting the log diagonal ones, Paddy. Like I mean, Flanagan's brilliant. He, sometimes he'll throw it over the shoulder and shoot or Galan, but often they'll win it out wide. They'll run the wrong way back the sideline. And now they're looking for Hegarty and Morrissey who are middle. catching up on the play. Mm. You know, like, I mean, they really have this down to a T that is very, very hard. To, this is why a lot of today's show is talking about what Cork can do. Because yeah. we know what Limerick can do. We've and it's bloody it. brilliant. It is brilliant. And, and Casey, is, I suppose, he's one lad I did want to talk about today just because he has been made available for the final, which, is, you know, that's another discussion. But he's hugely important to them uh, because he is an outlet ball there. If Obviously, if the full forward line win it, the two inside, he can come and collect it off him. But similarly, if the Hegarty or whoever's coming, maybe from midfield, is coming forward and they can't find somebody, he's the one out around the 30-metre line. He's moving left and right. And he would be a nightmare now to mark yeah. as a full-back because... You talk about speed over <clears throat> 30 yards sprinting. That's not what he's about, really. His is, if you put him in a phone box, he, you wouldn't be able to catch him because he's moving left, right, left, right, up and down. So when he gets the ball, he twists and turns it and then he just opens up a defence. So he's really important. And the fact is, Graham Mulcahy probably hasn't played uh, as well as he has a couple of years ago. He played the Munster final, came off um, before half time. So he probably isn't an option to play that role. Um, and did uh, Pat Pat Ryan obviously comes in, but he's more of that speed yeah. in one direction. So he probably wasn't the person you want in there either to start this game. So without Casey, I think they would have been, you know, they would have been a small bit hampered up in their forward line. But um, and and because. The two full, it'll be a good battle inside, I think. But Casey is the one that can really unlock it, and he's had he's probably underrated. I remember a couple of monster finals now, he's played unbelievably well so he's a huge bonus for them and kind of a danger man that's kind of kept under the radar yeah no he definitely is so what about a few matchups here lads uh, Robert Downey who's he going to pick up will it be Galan or Flanagan I don't know like I mean I'm starting to think Flanagan Fl- Flanagan's nearly more dangerous in there than Galan this year isn't he Damien no no he, he, he'll um, I, I think um, he'll pick up Flanagan uh, and I think uh, Niall O'Leary will pick up Aaron Galan yeah and, and I, I, don't know I think I um, think yeah, Sean and Hill. and I think uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, and uh, and I think the boys will say you have to take them for the team, and if and these boys can be taken, and uh, I think that'll be the rock's job. He he'll be a full back. They've played there before, and he'll be having a little small chat with the boys, and um, if if they can win that battle inside uh, with Flanagan and um, Galan, jeez, uh, they're, they're 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 on a positive, a huge positive, you know, and. Um, uh, there will be matchups all over the field, but if, if they can win them, if they can win them two battles, definitely, was it, they, they they have a great chance. Was it Donahue that Callan struck the time because he was a because he was marking him down in in Parky Kiever was this <coughs> Colum Spillane? I'm I not too sure that one, but I I, I just. Uh, Watched the match again yesterday, the semi final monster this year, and Sean O'Donoghue did some job on Galan. Um, he's what you don't want as a corner forward. Maybe Damien will <coughs> talk more about it. He's very fast, very, very, very fast, explosive off the mark, but he's strong as a bull as well. And like, if you, you see Prunty the last day marked uh, Galan, it wasn't high balls. It was low balls and he was getting out hip to hip with him. And even though there were good balls in, hip to hip and just shoving him out of the way. He's a big strong man, Donahue. Big Donahue's strong man. And O'Donoghue is, he might be as tall, but by God, he's as strong. You see the strong arms in yeah. him. And he's going to be trying his best. That ball comes down, you know the way they like it, down the side, down the, the sideline. He's going to be trying to shove him out of the way. And coming in around the back, I think it's very difficult to get around the front of the Limerick lads, but getting around the back of him and shoving him back out of the way, uh, that's a huge test. And in fairness to Downey, he did uh, like... Billy Ryan, you know, I thought it was a tough matchup for him, but he came into it and came into it, and by the time TJRE came in, he had really grown. And I think Damien is right. If they can match that, like Flanagan is more dangerous at the minute. He's a great ball winner. When they won their first All Ireland, he he kept Dahi Burke quiet. Yeah. I know it's sad to say keep a, a full back quiet, but Dahi Burke was that good. He kept him, um, you know, thinking about defending more than attacking, and so. It is a tough matchup for Robert Downey, but he has to. We don't. The beauty about this is we don't know how he's going to perform. First All Ireland final has played about two games at full back ever, I'm sure, and he's going out to Mark Flanagan, uh, one of the best full forwards. So I can't wait for that one. But that has to be at least broken even. If they're doing well, like you know, the wing forward line, half forward line are going to do a little bit of damage. But if you can at least stifle that full full forward line that they have, then again, I do think they have a chance then. But if they break them wide open, then they're in serious trouble. Is, is there an argument to say, Damien, that 
that the, you know, I thought the way Conor Prunty was often out beside Galan or even out ahead of him to the diagonal balls because diagonal balls for defenders and Paddy you'll know this or even forwards you're running away from the man that has the ball which is a little bit unusual like I mean it, like it's in Gaelic football a good few years now but even for a back you see a fella has the ball and your man's running away from him and you think ah look I'm grand here and I suppose it's just a matter of psychologically being switched on all the time that this ball is coming and Limerick signposted and you know it's coming why are defenders not taking a step on the outside of that? I know the danger oh, is that Flanagan oh, will turn back and go down. But they never give you one down. They never, they never give one down the line, though. They're always diagonal. Always. You can't, you can't, how do you answer that question for you, right? But what Limerick do and what they do with brilliant, and to be fair, Cork do it and they do it brilliantly as well, is call a 70-30 ball column. You're getting the ball and you're hitting it in 70-30 in the favour of the forward. But the back man cannot be that wrong side of the goals. The back man must p- play closest to his post because like you take any top forward like, and I think Galan I still think Galan is the main man in that full forward I know you speak about Flanagan like Galan should have scored a goal in the first half against Water. I know he put over the bar and then he scored a goal uh, Galan is a scorer that's number one but um, Colm you cannot rule number one when you're training <laughs> under sevens and under nines you cannot tell your cornerback to play on the outside which you're basically telling him to play on the sideline and I personally I, if you were coaching teams and you were allowing that to happen, I would have loved to have marked one of those cornerbacks <laughs> because what I used to love was when the ball used to come in, if the ball bounced in front of you, you were taking the ball on the turn. And when you take the turn, you're receiving it, you're hitting towards a black spot in the goal. So if that happens, your cornerback is behind you. So uh, no, Colm, you will not see that in the All-Ireland final where the cornerbacks will be playing on the sideline side of the back and I let Paddy Stapleton explain the rest. Rule number one, I'd say if that happened, Chairman O'Sullivan would out onto the pitch with a pair of shorts and, and such an eight would give his cornerbacks more. Rule number one, no, that will not happen. Damien, you're making me sound like I'm a terrible gobshite altogether. Right, I don't mean... That's, 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 that's rule, rule number one, Tom. A back marks his man and rule number two, your cornerbacks stay on the goal side of your man to protect the goals. Now, Paddy Stable will elaborate more because he's like cornerback. I'm not even going to defend myself no, here, Paddy. I'll let no, you he's just, no, he's right. Uh, and uh, 90... 90- Nine percent, he's right. I mean, read it though. Take the, yeah. I don't mean well, stand out there the whole time. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. No, it's. A, I tell you the way I look at it when I'm playing there. If just say I was marking Damien and he was coming in narrow near near the goalpost, even he was standing on the twenty one. I'd be more on his back uh, than his side, his inside. I'd still cover the inside line, but I'd be kind on his back because I'm assuming that the, any ball in he's going to want it out into the space out the back so I'm just going to have myself primed to at least be able to run past his outside shoulder whereas if I'm have myself stuck on his inside I'm not going to be able to get through him to get out in front do you know that one if it's hit right, right. out the wing and I'm trying to get out in front and then it slips so by you stand me. directly behind him just when he comes in narrow if he's out wide if he's you know given a lot he's, of, he's standing on the inside oh, of stand on his inside and I hope because I have a marker my side, the sideline is my marker then on the sideline so really I know that's not an option the sideline isn't an option now you know then any ball that comes it's going to be directly but I can get right out in front of him and actually push it out in front of me and, and, and grab it and go so that's the only way I might think of going around the back of him or, or kind of not being on his inside but it's Russian roulette like it's Russian roulette I've done it and it's come a little bit on the inside and then you're absolutely screwed like you know he's on your inside and at the end of the day Damien's right you're trying to protect the goals and if a, if a silly goal goes in like that it can absolutely kill you the, the, Traditionally though right so say you're a uh, cornerback and you have another cornerback traditionally you're coming down say their number five will probably stick it down <coughs> that wing and you're racing out for him right so Limerick are doing this completely differently hmm. so if you're in that position even the diagonal ball Say Kyle Hayes is left half back and mm. he's looking over at the Fair. the number fifteen car or the number thirteen corner. That's not even for that man. That's for Galan coming across into that mm. corner and Flanagan's getting mm. out of there. You know, or was it's it? roll around the circle. St- they start kind of in the middle, mm. so there's so much space out there. Well, you often see three of them in there. Yeah, and it's like and Cork. I remember that's why I say Cork were hard to play against. They used to do that as well. So bunch and break. They come in. They just be standing around the fourteen. <laughs> but 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 Colum, the the reason for that ball is. Right, you might say, why would they cross? Uh, why would uh, Kyle Hayes get a ball and cross it from one wing to the other wing? Whatever, and instead of hitting it down the line, the reason for it is because it's an easier ball to win. 
Yeah, that, that's easier long, ball. short. But I'm easier, saying, uh, but, I, easier, but Damien, I'm saying, why should it be an easier ball to win when it's so predictable now? I think Conor Prunty read okay. a lot, read a lot of them, and he was out ahead yeah. of Galan on the outside. <clears throat> okay, well that's Galan's problem. The the boys will have a chat with him and say that shouldn't happen. You knew this ball was going to come across. You know the game plan that we hit the diagonal ball across. You should have got across, and you should have won the ball. But the reason as well for it, Colin, is it's easier catch a ball coming out in front. Or when the ball is hit at a dangle and you're running and the ball bounces onto the ground, it's easier to snap it, right? Then easier to come out in a straight line with, for example, Paddy Stapleton behind you, Damien Hayes coming out for the ball, I like guess, and trying to have the most immaculate first touch to gain the ball when Paddy Stapleton is trying to tackle you. And that's the reason for it. And often when you hit a diagonal ball across the field, when you win it, your body is at an angle. So it is, and when it's at an angle, you can take a shot or you can take it on or you can offload a pass instead of your body being in a straight line. It, there's a bit of science to it and which ball did Damien Hayes before when he played corner for us, I always prefer the diagonal ball. And if you watch, the, in particular, Aaron Galan, and you're after making a point that Punty bet him out to a lot of balls, I'd say the Limerick manager will have a chat with him and say, this can't happen again. Yeah. But that's the ball that Aaron Galan loves and Flanagan loves it as well, is the cross field ball that they're running onto into space where they can get a score, make a score, or offload a ball to an attack of forward. I'd say what <clears throat> Limerick management to be saying to Galan is that you're too predictable. Like, yes, we're saying we're putting it into the far corner, but there's still a half a pitch to work in there. Yeah. So Pronti obviously said, well, I know exactly where Galan likes it every time. I've him studied. He likes it nearly right out in the sideline. He kind of, he goes uh, left over to the line and then makes his way out a little arc. And if you know what's going to come uh, in team sports, then you know what to try and uh, blot out and how to blot it out. But what you'd be saying is, well, why are you taking laws on the sideline? Why aren't you making a little run to the right, then running out a little bit more centrally in that area? And then you can't know exactly where the ball is going to come. So, like, I, we, we talk about, I've talked about John Milan before. I thought it was very, very hard to mark because, yes, I knew he was going to um, he was going to make his run, but he'd make one right out to the sideline one time. Then it's out to the sideline, but, cut back in and the key is that uh, the Limerick guys will find you like they don't hit the ball until they don't have the pressure on them so I think it, the onus is more on a Galan a Flanagan to make a couple of those little runs to have the right timing to get into space and if they're just making that predictable run out then I'd say Limerick management John Kiley will call him and say look that's too lazy yeah. that's not good enough yeah yeah move get free get free a little bit better right lads prediction so Damien I'll start with you what do you think well, Limerick I think Limerick win the All-Ireland. I think, I think Limerick are a better team. I think they're a stronger team. I just don't think it's Cork's time. That, that's the, the nicest way I can say will this. Be, do, you think it'll be, don't think it's, do you think it'll be close, Damien? Uh, uh, for it to be close, uh, I think Cork are going to have to do an awful lot right. And I mean that. I, I mean it's going to have to start... Uh, up, I was going to have to start in the Cork full back line, as in managing the likes of... Um, uh, Peter Casey and Aaron Galan and Flanagan and we're on about uh, Peter Casey just to say I'm delighted that he's playing I really am on a personal level like this but the way I would describe Peter Casey as a corner forward he's a floater he's not a sprinter he's a floater he gets onto balls he snaps balls over the bar he's, he's usually a two to three point game and he also links a little play but uh, the long and short of it is Colm if Cork can even break even 50-50 in the middle eight they've got a great chance but they have to sustain the boys inside and I hope that they will attack and play to their strengths to really make a game of this but the answer is you've asked me a question and my answer is that I think Limerick will win the All-Ireland I think they're the best team I think this particular Limerick team is phenomenal like this and I think I just think it's brilliant to see Cork back there but I just don't think it's Cork's time I think they're building I think they have a young team uh, but I think Limerick will win the All-Ireland they've obviously played each other twice this year has been eight points on both occasions mm. now Kieran Kingston did make the point this conceded 2-4 in injury time at the end of the first half and and two goals at the injury time in the first half and four in the injury time 2-4 they lost by eight mm. that was a much closer game than eight points eight points yeah. doesn't look good on them I don't know Like I, I'm thinking of Mayo Dublin last week Like for Cork to win they say if they're even eight points up at half time that's a dangerous position oh, to be in but if they're three points behind with five minutes to go and the crowd get behind them you know they could rally with four and win it you know and Limerick might think they, they kind of have it won in a way you yeah. know the way you can go into a sleep stay mode. in there stay, stay in there, there stay in right. and then a spark yeah. Cadigan could come on they could get a goal even Kingston if were, even, if, <laughs> Kingston, even if they were five down yeah. and got a goal 
You could see Cork pushing on after that then. Well, you could. You see, Limerick are getting ahead in a lot of their matches. Uh, Bar the Munster final, they're kind of getting ahead by a certain amount and keeping it at arm's length. Even that semi-final uh, in the Munster against... Cork they got those two it was like soccer punches they were two bad bad goals to give away like really inexperienced too many men going to the ball not not marking the extra man that was left off yeah. behind and then Kyle Hayes ran through and like they will have their homework done on that one anyway but it's it's, it's marrying up whether they can be bullish enough be strong enough to hold them around the middle without committing too many men uh, to it but um, I look like Damien I, I think it's Limerick's to lose really but Cork and and the, my biggest thing is, if I look at Limerick, they're so strong in the middle eight, but they're two midfielders like Willow Donahue working back the last day. I saw him in the first minute, uh, and he was after Bar- um Sorry, he was after Bennett, who was driving forward from centre back, and he just wouldn't let him go. And it's one thing to be a big man, but he's big and absolutely lightning fast. And it's like he makes up for two. It's like Michael Fenley in the day. Yeah, he's yeah. all over everyone. He's all arms and legs and length and hurlies in around him, very disciplined. So he's against Luke Mead and, and Fitzgibbon. And I just think physically around the middle and it's like a symbol for the rest of the battles around there. I think physically they're not strong enough for them. And you're saying they have to play their game. And yeah, I do think they have to play their game. But whether they're late or not, are they going to be mid play Limerick's game of hitting it down their half back line? And I just think they're not developed enough yet that they'd be able to get away from that. And I think at times, inevitably, they are going to have too many guys in their own back line because they'll be putting out fires and yeah. I just don't think they score enough to, to get over the line. Oh, so how do you and see it? And also, Colm, yeah? and Co- Colm, another thing that I would think is a disadvantage to Cork the next is that Keane Lynch only scored three points last year against Waterford. And I reckon that that man has a phenomenal um, target, as in... He has his own performance levels that he wants to reach. And I reckon he would have been disappointed in his own performance against Waterford the last day, which, it, which he would want to absolutely drive through this Cork team, if you, if you know what I mean. He, he has a level that he likes to get to. And I reckon personally, he mightn't say this, right? But I reckon he would be disappointed that he only scored three points the last day against Waterford. And I could see him having a massive uh, game against um, Cork uh, in the All Ireland. Yeah, I don't. Know. I see it being close. I see. I see Limerick winning it, mm. but only. I see this being a bit of a, a, a like a dogfight. Like I'm it. hoping to do it. I, like maybe I'm hoping. You know, the smart money is probably Limerick by five points, but I can see Cork putting it up to them. Do you see Limerick winning comfortably, or do you see this being a, a going right down to the wire? I just find it very hard to predict it because. Cork, in fairness, them over the last two or three matches are getting to better levels and better levels. And when it was put up to them against Kilkenny, they found another way to get to a higher level. So that's why I find it really difficult. And what I've seen already, I don't think the I think Kilkenny flattered to deceive a little bit this year, and Cork should have been beating them well enough. Um, and they still struggled over the line against them. So that's why I'm judging it on on that. And I still think Limerick should could probably win fairly well they could probably win by 7 or 8 points like. On, uh, but I hope I really hope Cork can bring on bring something new bring some metal some hurt that they haven't brought before and really just put it up to them so I'd love to see it maybe that was 2 or 3 points for a few minutes to go Yeah, they are going to bring something new they're going to play their 6 forwards and the forwards is something well, new to... that's old but it's, it's now new and again we, <laughs> we talk about Tim O'Malley maybe I hope to God that he drives on from the last day maybe we see a lad who's playing in the back who's going to give Limerick a serious amount of trouble because they're going to need something driving from midfield that really worries the Limerick uh, the Limerick machine but if, it's interesting if they, can contain, if they can contain their 2 half forwards as well Limerick's 2 half forwards like last year's All Ireland final column, they scored eleven points from play, and if they can contain Morrissey and Hagerty as well, like if, if they can, if they can hold an awful lot of Limerick players, Limerick players will be looking around and and, and you know and they're big players and looking around and saying, "Cheese, I guess." And like I think Morrissey is a big player uh, for Limerick, and for anyone that's listened to the show, just watch Morrissey. He's the he's the best forward, in my opinion, in the game to score a point on the swivel. Mm. And you, he, 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 he laid off balls. He, he lays off balls, and he doesn't turn. He he actually strikes on a swivel. He doesn't have to take his two or three steps and drive it over the bar. Five points last. It just it just watch it. But it geez, if they cork half back line, basically got stuck into them two in the half back line. I'm just saying, and they weren't scoring their points. You know, you can see how cork will trouble him, and I hope the cork will come to that Ireland with a bit of steel and a bit of energy and a bit and a bit of a running game. Like this, they'll, they'll play to their positives. But, uh, and I would say they should watch their Watford um, Limerick game in the first 17 and a half minutes and see the hitting that went on and, uh, you know, really push it up to uh, Limerick. But uh, if they could get stuck into the Limerick 
two half backs and, and put them on the back foot. Uh, they, geez, they have every chance of winning this All Ireland, but I just think Limerick are, will, will be too strong. But they, they have to do an awful lot of positives and they have to turn an awful lot of the Limerick main players on their back foot. Yeah, exactly. Usually I finish with uh, predictions, lads, but we've gotten right back into analysis there now, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to cut it. We have at to cut it stage. off at some time. We leave it there, lads. We'll be back on Monday morning. I'm going to hopefully be out in the Winners Hotel on Monday morning. Which one is it going to be? We'll have to wait and, and see. So we'll talk to you all um, on Monday and we'll review the All-Ireland then. Good luck. Yeah.